Oh wow, my camera was so high. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to Adam in the Afternoon with Jono, that's me. How's everyone doing? I hope you have recovered from this morning's high octane lesson on subjects and objects. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm so bad at multitasking. I'm doing my best. Um, do you lose just telling someone okay and okay so as you might have known if you were in up and atom this morning where we are doing subjects and objects this afternoon we are doing we are diving into the wonderful world of the active and the passive voice so that is what we're doing before we get going can anyone tell me the difference between the active and the passive voice what have I been doing? Yas oh, Yasmin, you've changed your name. Um, what have I been doing today? I've been making the presentation for tomorrow's lesson. Tomorrow's Friday fun day lesson is gonna be on dinosaurs. You're welcome. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. Ah, Yasmin, you're gonna write a poem for the kindness entry. That's really exciting. I can't wait to read it. Remember everyone else to get in your, uh, remember everyone else to get in your entries for the creative writing competition for the random act of kindness day. So good afternoon. Hi, Alex. Hi, Yasmin. Um, Chayton, a joiners of Jono's, my new favourite collective noun. Thank you, Nana. That's a lovely compliment. So I will be leading the uh, lesson today and the lovely co-training today will be Anna, who is the curriculum lead. You are, you are a lucky class today. We have a very, very talented and lovely co-trainer. So expect some very good answers. Uh, I will do my best to persuade you, Yasmin. Um, so, as I've said today, we are going to be going over the active and the passive voice. So this will build on what we covered this morning when we were going over subjects and objects. So I hope you're ready for a fun lesson. Now, what I need to do, I just need to, um, to sorry, I just opened up the YouTube share and it's really zoomed in on my face. So I'm just going to fix that because <laughs> I don't think anyone wants that. And then I'll share my screen and we'll get going with a warm up. So as I said, can anyone tell me the difference between the active and the R? Oh, anonymous attendee has got it. Active has a subject and a verb. Passive has an agent and a verb. Really, really nice. James, James, it's nice to see you. Um, welcome to the lesson. Thank you for joining. Right, so let's get into it. I will share my screen. Boom. And you should all be able to see uh, my screen now. So as a little warm up, as is customary in our lessons, could you tell me the subject in the sentence below? The meerkat poked its head above the earth and surveyed the barren landscape. What is the subject in that sentence? Who can tell me? Who was paying attention this morning? That's what I'm really asking with this question. Who knows what is the subject? So just type your answer in the Q&A and I will have a look out. I'm really well, Katerina, how are you? I'm very well, Chris, as well, thank you for asking. Ah, oh, like lightning speed on the Q&A, well done, Eric, well done, Regav, well done, and Schumann. James James as well with the right answer too. It is the meerkat, well done, everyone. The meerkat is the subject in that sentence. Haley, yes, it is the meerkat, well done. Well done, Sam and Faray as well, hi, Faray. Um, um, Sass, well done. And yes, Fiona, it is the meerkat. So why is it the meerkat? I am glad you asked. The correct answer is meerkat. We know it's the subject because it is the person or thing that does the verb. In this sentence, the meerkat poked its head out and surveyed the landscape. We get two verbs for the price of one in this sentence. So it's written in the active voice, <laughs> a little bit of a, uh, hint on what we'll be covering a little bit later it's in the active voice meaning the subject does the action when something is written in the passive voice the subject has the action done to it so that's a really important difference between the active and passive voice but don't worry we'll be getting into that and so much more fun a little bit later okay it's nearly two o'clock i think we've got a time for one more warm-up question and i want to make sure that we are all ready to vote on the poll so have a look. This is a sentence you might recognize from this morning. What is 
the, the poll is having a moment to think about itself. So just give me a sec, it's not letting me launch it. What I'll do is, can you tell me whether you were hurt by his spiteful words or malicious glances? Hopefully, I press launch the poll and, ah, yay, it worked, okay. <laughs> So what is the subject in the following sentence? I'm not sure why there's a random up in the title. I apologize. Okay, how are we doing? We've had about a minute on the poll. So remember, this is just the warm up. So don't worry if you don't have time to vote. I know we have different reading speeds for all different kinds of reasons. You can watch this back on your lesson library afterwards and just pause the video here if you need a bit longer to have a think about this question. So I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. And I can see the majority of us went for answer option A. Well done, that makes me feel like a very proud teacher because it shows me that you are paying attention this morning and in the question that we just went over. So well done, everyone. You is the subject of both the verbs can and were hurt. Now, this is a bit of a tricky one because the sentence is actually a question. And if you remember, the position of the main verb and the subject is inverted, okay? So we switch it around. I was about to turn my coffee mug upside down, but there's coffee in it, so I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, let me take my hand um, cream or and slash body cream. But what we do is we invert it when we invert the order of the subject and the verb when we ask a question. So what this means is that usually the subject precedes the verb, right? But in a question, the subject follows the verb. OK, so in this case, can is a verb and you is the subject. Now, the verb were hurt is in the passive voice. So the person who is hurt is also the subject of the verb. I didn't come to play around today with this question. If this question was in the active voice, words and glances would also be subject. But they are agents because uh, were hurt is the passive voice. So again, there were two red herrings in this answer. So extra well done for getting this question right. It was a tricky one to get us kicked off. Okay. So I just couldn't resist. We'll get, I can't resist one more question. You know how I feel about collective nouns. You've seen um, the video I showed in yesterday's lesson of me talking about the different collective nouns. So just a fun final question before we get going. Do you know the collective noun for a group of walruses? If you want to look like a walrus, you can get chopsticks and you can like put them in front of your, put them in front of your mouth and you look a bit like a walrus something I used to do with my friends. I'd like to say I've grown up, but I probably still do it with those high school friends. Oh, we have a split in the poll. I'm just gonna give you five more seconds on this one because it might, it might just be something that you have to guess. Okay, last vote in. Don't worry if you don't have time. How did we do? The majority of us went for answer option B, but this was pretty close. We had 64 for huddle and 51 for whimsy. A whimsy of walruses or a huddle of walruses? It is a huddle of walruses. If you want to remember that, just think how cute walruses are and how much you want to hug them because they're like soft and fluffy and cuddly and all that stuff. So it's a huddle of walruses, which builds on the noun lesson from yesterday. We are getting our, you're getting your um, education's worth in this lesson, I tell you. Okay, so well done on the walk. I hope everyone's brains are nice and warmed up and supple and ready to do a gymnastics routine covering the active and passive voice. So that's what we're doing today. As you know, I will start by going through the topic, telling you everything you need to know, and then we're gonna consolidate that knowledge straight up with some questions. The questions will be both on the active and passive voice. So you're gonna to have to work out which one it is in your brain to help you get to the right answer. So let's get into it. So 
listen to the voices. Do you know what I mean? This is something I tell myself on a daily basis. Listen to the voices because you've got to trust yourself more and listen to that voice telling you you can do it. That's the voice that we like. Sometimes there are other voices. That's okay. You need to appreciate that they're there, but don't let them control your life. I have When I have a voice that tells me not to do something, I call that voice Vanessa and I tell Vanessa to be quiet. I'm like, no, Vanessa, I need to do this. I don't trust your input. So I tell Vanessa to please be quiet. I thank her for her opinion, but I'm like, no, Vanessa, I can do this. I'm not listening to that voice. Anyway, that's insight into the voices in my head, everyone. Let's talk about different voices, the active voice and the passive voice. So the active voice, that is when the subject of the sentence is doing the action in the sentence. So the woman ran to the beach. So that is in the active voice because the woman is the person doing the action, she's running to the beach. Whereas the passive voice is used when the subject of the sentence, sentence has the action done to it. So the man was tanned by the sun. Okay, so that's in the passive voice because the, action, the, the man was tanned by the sun. The action is done to the man. He is being tanned by the sun. So it's passive voice. It has the action done to it. So that is the main difference between spotting the path active and passive voice. So we always just need to look at the subject and is, is the subject of the sentence doing the action or having the action done to it. That is the first step in deciding whether it's active or passive voice. Now let's have a look at a cute active voice sentence. So the horse chewed the hay. <laughs> subject, verb, object. So we have our subject, which is the horse, cute little horse, uh, the verb chewed, past tense, and then the object, hay. So the verb chewed the hay, the verb chewed the hay. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me today? The horse chewed the hay, not the verb chews the hay, chewed is the verb, the horse chewed the hay. So the subject is the horse, it is the one doing the action, okay? Now what's nice about the active voice is we can learn that structure, it goes subject, it goes object, it goes verb. That is when, when we have the active voice, we know the structure with which we need to go in. It's always the subject, then the verb, then the object. Remember the exception being when we have a cute little question. When we have a question, it's verb and then subject. So that's our active voice sentence. Are we ready for a little bit of passive voice? I think we are. The hay was chewed by the horse. So here we've got we've got a, a few more players to contend with. We still have our subject, the hay, and we know it's a subject because it comes before the verb, and this isn't a question. So the hay was chewed by the horse. Now the passive voice, the, the passive voice is just, do you know what I mean? It's living its best life, and it's like two verbs is not an, enough for me. I need an auxiliary verb. Auxiliary just means extra. So was chewed, that is the, the chewed is the past participle of the main verb. So was chewed tells us it's the past tense. So the hay was chewed by the horse. Here the horse is the agent, so it's having the action done to it. The hay was chewed by the horse. So I'd say key things that help me identify the passive voice is that auxiliary verb, so the was, that is a very useful verb for identifying the passive voice. The by as well, by happens, features a lot in the passive voice. So the hay was chewed by the horse. Notice here, instead of having subject verb object like we do in the active voice, we have subject verb agent. So a subtle but important difference. So that is the key difference between the active and the passive voice. Now, warning, sirens, boom, 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 boom. Sentences in the passive voice do not always have an agent, okay? So the plate was broken, heartbreaking. Hopefully it wasn't like a nice, like artisanal potter's plate. It was just something from like Sainsbury's or something. The plate was broken. It doesn't, you don't need to say the plate was broken by Jono or the plate was broken by whomever. It's just the plate was broken. Short, impactful statement. If you want to write a creative writing story, you might just have the plate was broken, full stop, to add some tension to your writing, um, which you might want to do for the creative writing competition. So just giving you some hints, just giving you some hints, take them if you want, but I'm going to be the one reading them. So you might want to implement some of my suggestions. Okay, so I think I've been talking a little bit too much, um, hazard of the trade. What I want to know from you is, can you think of any times when a writer would use the 
passive voice? Because a lot of the time we're told to write in the active voice because it's shorter and more direct. But can you think of any times where a writer might choose to use the passive voice? Like, why would they do it? Oh, Ayan coming in with suspense. I hope I said the R in your name strongly enough because I know I don't always do. Shrewdness, nice, okay. When trying to be formal, good job, Tegan. Hello, Naima. In a story, yes, it could be in a story. Laura says when we do persuasive writing to create tension from Kieran, really good. Mayasa, suspense is good, but just make sure you spell suspense with an S at the end, not a C. Julian also saying when you're being formal, Alice agreeing. Okay, really good. Some lovely answers in the Q&A. Thank you everyone for joining, for contributing. Really good. So let's have a look at some examples. So sometimes we'll use the passive voice when it's not known who did the action or the verb or the writer does not want to say, which again, that could create some suspense. So like the plate was broken, dun, 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 who did it? We don't know, we use the passive voice. Whereas if, it, if we said like, Jono broke the plate, that, there's no suspense there, we know who did it. It's a classic who done it. So maybe you might wanna, maybe your random act of kindness would be fixing the plate. Who knows? Maybe that's what you could incorporate in your story. There's a really nice Japanese art technique where you fix broken plates using like melted down bits of gold so that it makes the plate more precious than it was before. Fun fact. Another reason why we might use the passive voice is that you want to emphasize the action um, or the recipient of the action rather than the person that does the action. So the plate was broken by Jono, dun, 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 the tension is over. We want to, we don't care about the plate that was broken. We care that I did it because I'm the one that's going to get into trouble. And maybe I said I hadn't broken the plate previously in the story. So you want to emphasize that no, Jono did break the plate. So the plate was broken by Jono. It puts the emphasis on me. It could also be like, you could do it the plate was broken by the dog or the cat or who, whoever broke the plate. We want to put the emphasis on them. We would use the passive voice. It can also make a sentence sound less direct. So I think it's quite nice in narrative writing to use the passive voice, but that's just a personal choice. It can just, it creates like a nice kind of calm, serene imagery. Whereas if you're reading like prose, which is all in the active voice, it gets a bit much harm. It's a bit like, calm down, I'm reading to relax. I kind of want some nice auxiliary verbs to slow down my reading speed. So sometimes it's just professional choice. I think also like reporting is always done in the passive voice just by tradition. So I don't watch lots of football, which may come as a surprise to you, but I think football matches are reported like the ball was passed to Jeremy, who then passed it into the goal and scored a touchdown whatever so like you can when you report when reporters are like describing sport it's often done in the passive voice just out of tradition so that's just something to be aware of okay really good job in the q a class really really impressed with a lot of your knowledge of the active and passive voice already okay now we're going to be switching positions and we are going from active to passive boom it's okay we want to be versatile in our writing so we want to be versatile with our active and passive voices let's get into it the aliens were driving the spaceship so that is going to be um so the aliens were driving the spaceship then the spaceship was being driven by the aliens so i'm going to talk through the steps that i have taken to convert these sentences so the subject in the active voice sentence, the alien, so the top one is in the active voice, the aliens becomes the agent in the passive voice sentence. So the aliens were driving the spaceship. We know that the aliens are, the aliens are the one performing the action, so we know it's the active voice, but those aliens become the agent in the passive voice, okay? Now let's look at the verb next. So the verb in the active voice sentence changes from, changes form in the passive, voice sentence. So the auxiliary verb to be and the past participle are used. So we have were driving, that changes to was being driven. Okay, so we need to have the auxiliary form of to be, being, 
added to the sentence. So we have to add that extra auxiliary verb. Notice in the active voice, we just have those two verbs, were driving. We add that extra verb in the bottom passive voice sentence. So the spaceship was being driven, okay? So that's how the verb changes. And then finally, we've done the subject, we've done the verb. Next, we need to look at the object in the active voice sentence, which is the spaceship. Now, it is a step up for the spaceship, honey. It is having a good life. That The object in the active voice sentence becomes the subject of the passive voice sentence. That spaceship has had a glow up. It is, It has gotten rid of all the toxic energy in its life. And it's like, I'm not an object anymore. I am a subject. I've learned my lessons. The spaceship is the subject of the sentence because it is having the action done to it in the passive voice, which makes it the subject. And the aliens go from being a subject to an agent. So hopefully those nice colour coded arrows show you how we make that transition from the active voice to the passive voice. Okay, so I think a lot of you will be happy to know that the majority of the content we're going to cover in this didactic teaching format is done. So we've got some questions ready to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the first sentence and I want you to tell me which of the sentences below is written in the active voice, okay? So have a go. Which of the sentences is written in the active voice? If you want an extension, could you tell me the subject verb and object if there is one? The aliens are estate agents, like it, Eleanor. <laughs> Someone telling me I'm crazy in a good way, I accept. Alice, well done, you've got the object correct. Ayan, you have got the subject, well done. Okay, we've had a minute, so I'll start giving you some hints now. So remember in the active voice, we have a subject, we have a verb and we have an object. And the key thing with the active voice, the subject is performing the action, okay? So let's have a little look through. So the coffee was spilt. Now, I am, I'm not very happy with this one, to be honest, because this reminds me a little bit of the plate was broken, right? So if you're always stuck, remember trying to think of other sentences that you've come across that are written in the passive voice. So the coffee was spilled. That sounds a bit like the plate was broken because I don't know who did the spilling. Do you know what I mean? Also, I spill tea, I don't spill coffee. So that one wouldn't have been me. So the coffee was spilled. So again, we could also add the coffee was spilled by like, I don't know, Jennifer. The coffee was spilled by Jennifer. Then that would be a more obvious passive voice because we have the by, by Jennifer. But here there's actually, we have the subject, the coffee. The coffee has the action done to it because the coffee is spilled. The coffee doesn't like spill itself unless it's become sentient and we're in some like zombie apocalypse world. You know what I mean? So the coffee is not performing the action. So A has got to be in the, so A, passive voice, done. Answer, answer option, B, the dancer performed on the stage. Now, I was gonna go through and eliminate these answers one by one, but I'm liking the sound of answer option B. The dancer performed on the stage. Well, the dancer is the one performing the action. So I'm pretty sure that makes it the active voice. Let's see how many of us got that. So well done. The majority of us went for answer option B. 66 of us, 49 English grammar experts and grammar geniuses in the class today. Well done. The dancer performed on the stage. The dancer is the subject and the, the stage is the object. The dancer performed on the stage. The dancer is the person performing the action. So big old tick, that is our active voice. Let's just go through the other ones for comprehensiveness. I think A was probably the hardest one to eliminate. C and D are pretty, you can pretty quickly identify that's 
passive voice because we've got by a famous artist or by the mice. And when you have like by so-and-so, that's a pretty good indication that it's the passive voice. But for completeness, for a holistic educational journey, the picture was painted by a famous art artist. The picture is not the one performing the action. It is the, so that means that, but it's coming before the verb. So we know that it's got to be the subject because it comes before the verb. The picture was painted it's not performing the action, so it's got to be the passive voice. Same for the cheese. The cheese was eaten by the mice. The cheese is not the one doing the eating, so it is the passive voice. So well done. That answer was B. Good job, everyone. Let's have a look at the next question. So have a read of the sentence, and then can you tell me the answer to the question? Which verb is in the passive voice? If you want an extension, can you tell me what an ingenue is? What is an ingenue? Eleanor, really good work on the last extension activity with telling me the subject, the verb and the object. Tegan, Jonas built the coffee would make that sentence into an into the active voice. Well done. <laughs> so everyone keep focusing on the lesson. Don't worry about anything on the, where is the word, where in the world is Anjo? I haven't seen anyone get the extension right in the Anjanu. Who can tell me what an Anjanu is? And sometimes you can see anonymous answers on the Q&A. Don't worry about it. We have talked to Zoom and asked for it to get fixed. So we're doing the best we can, but just focus on the lesson, please, everyone. The extension, Nicole, is what is a ingenue? Eleanor, well done, you got it. Albert, don't worry, I will tell you. It's not a composer. It doesn't mean genius, Alice. Arian, I love that your bird knows how to say Jono and how to say Atom. Okay, so we've had enough, on, we've had enough time on this question. So, in the following sentence, you, you need the verb, which is in the active voice. So remember, sorry, in the passive voice, remember the passive voice will often have an, such a hard word to say, auxiliary. It will have an auxiliary verb with it. So I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. And I can see the majority of us went for answer option C. Well done. The answer is C. And the reason that the answer is C is because the, so the correct answer is was performing. And this is because the, the clause, the song was performed by the famous ingenues in the passive voice because the subject, which is the song, has the action of the verb done to it. The song was performed by the agent, which is the famous ingenue. In the active voice, that clause would read the famous ingenue performed the song. OK, so the famous ingenue performed the song would make it active voice but here the song was performed by the famous ingenue if we have a look let me just highlight that in a nice little pink color the song was performed song comes before the verb so remember first step what comes before the verb that's got to be the subject so song is the subject of this clause was performed is the song performing the action no it's not so i know that this needs to be the passive voice so was performed is our verb in the passive voice and then famous ingenue is going to be our agent okay so the audience were applauding loudly that's a little bit where applauding is a bit of a red herring but if we think about it the subject is the audience and the audience are the audience the p the people performing the action i think you'll find they are because the audience were applauding loudly Boom, 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 boom. The audience were applauding loudly because they had enjoyed the play immensely. The audience are the people who are applauding. So that is the active voice. 
Now, for those of you asking, an ingenue is like a new up and coming like singer who maybe doesn't have like a lot of experience. So if you've ever watched A Star Is Born, that's the classic tale of an ingenue becoming a super famous singer. So like you're just starting, if you're just starting out your singing career or your acting career, you're gonna be an ingenue. Um, bit of a weird term, but ingenue. I think it must be French, it sounds French. Anyway, good job on those that detected the active voice. I think we're doing so well. I think it's time for another question. Also, sorry if I was, my, I think I was, I was meant to be annotating the last question. Apologies if I paused my screen share. So next up, so as you notice, the questions will be getting progressively harder. You're welcome. In the following sentence, what is the agent of the verb revealed? And if you want an extension, could you give me an antonym for delightful? Good job so far on the poll. We've had about a minute and over 50% of us have voted. Remember, as a little hint, before I look at our extension answers, the agent occurs in the passive voice. Okay. So we know we're looking for something in the passive voice. And remember this, in the passive voice, the subject is the person that has the action done to them. So have a think about what that means about the agent. I don't want to give too much away. I'm being sneaky, Jono, today. Great job, Kieran, dreadful, Harun with disgusting, Yasmin with grotesque, Zara with horrific. Those are all great antonyms of delightful. Horrible from Tegan, very nice. Oh, FS, sorrowful, that's a great word. Unpleasant from Alice, really nice. Don't worry if you're late, Jennifer. There's still plenty of opportunities for questions. Unappealing from Krish, very good. Ah, Nicole, Nicole, miserable, sullen, blue, down, four antonyms, love it. Boom, that, the boom was from Ayan. <laughs> Oh, someone called me sir. That makes me feel very um, fancy. So I saw a few of us were asking what the agent was. So I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end the poll and start talking through this answer. Okay. Really good job for the those of us who got our votes in. Remember, I know that some people take a bit longer to read for a variety of reasons. That's totally okay. Don't worry. You can always watch this back and pause it if you need a bit more time. I just want to make sure we can get through as many questions as we can. So when you watch it back, there's plenty for you to look at. So the majority of us went for answer option E. Were we correct? Bam. Well done. These questions are getting tricky. So I'm really, really impressed with everyone. Well done. So the reason this is her, we need to look at the verb. So it was revealed as in the passive voice. This means the subject of the clause is the thing being revealed, okay? Rather than the person doing the revealing. So her needs to be the agent of the verb because one, it's followed by the, prepon pre by the preposition by. That's a really, it, sorry, it follows the preposition by. That's a really good way of identifying the agent. In the passive voice, it's almost always followed by by. So if that's your first step to understanding how to identify an agent, stick with it, run it, print it, go. The preposition demonstrates her relationship to the verb was revealed, okay? So souffle was her specialty and when the delightful dessert was revealed by her, she was applauded by all her guests. So we know that when, her dessert, when the des delight delightful dessert was revealed, we know it was revealed as in the passive voice, because one, we've got that nice auxiliary verb, and also the dessert isn't revealing itself. 
So the dessert was revealed by her. We know that her, she is the one doing the action. She is the one revealing the dessert. So she is the agent because the agent in the passive voice is the person, place, no, I was going to say person, place or thing, just person that performs the action. So good job, everybody. Right. And also great job on the extension, giving me some delightful antonyms for delightful. I think grotesque was one of my faves. It's just a good word, isn't it? It also just sounds a bit gross. Right. Let's get into it. Stop sharing. We have another question. Then I'll do a nice little summary before even more questions. So can you change the verb in the sentence into the simple future tense? retaining the passive voice. I know, I am really mean today. Sorry, it's Thursday, I'm cranky. I need my weekend recovery. Oh, loathsome, lovely antonym for delightful. Okay, well done, we've had about a minute. What I'll start doing is I'll start giving you some hints on how to answer. So the children's names had been memorized, okay? So we know that's the verb we're looking at, okay? And we want to turn it into the future tense and retain the passive voice, okay? So if I would be having a cute little look at this, my first port of call would be like, okay, I'm just gonna see is just chop, see is out, because would, would, could, and should is all the conditional tense. So I know that's not the future tense, so I can get rid of C. Now I've got one in three chances of getting the answer right. I like those odds. So next we've got will have been memorized, will be memorized or will memorize, okay? And all we want is the simple future tense. Now you might need to go and have a look at the verbs lesson on the lesson library if you need a reminder on tenses because that's all covered in one of our micro lessons. But what you need to, the will have, that is in the future tense. But when we have have, that forms a special kind of tense called the perfect tense, okay? So will have been memorized is a type of, is a future perfect, okay? Will be memorized. That's kind of floating my boat, to be honest. That's definitely future tense. And it's, it's in the passive voice. I know it's in the passive voice because well, I'm gonna show you by comparison. D, will memorize, is gonna be in the active voice because we've got no auxiliary verb here. The will be, that nice little auxiliary verb of the conjugation of to be helps us identify it as the passive voice. I've said too much. I've still left the poll running. How did we vote? So the majority of us did go for answer option B. Well done, 45 of us, but a lot of us fell into that trap of A. So the answer is B will have been memorized. It's not the simple future tense, okay? Simple future tense, keep it simple. It's normally just like will. So will memorize would be simple future tense active. We need it in the passive voice, so will be memorized, okay? Cause you, you might, let's compare those in like a sentence cause it might make it a bit, make it make more sense. So the children's names will be memorized. Okay, that's in the passive voice because the children's names aren't the things doing the memorization. Whereas if I said, I will memorize the children's names, I will memorize is in the active voice because I am the person who's memorizing the children's names. Okay, the children's names have been memorized. We don't know who did it. That's also a good sign that it's the passive voice. Think about that plate from the beginning, right? The children's names have been memorized by the dog, by the cat by the chicken, by the cactus, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. We don't know who that is. That should trigger in your brain, be like, oh my gosh, I remember when Jono was talking about that plate, that plate was broken, 
end of the sentence, there was no agent. We, we don't always need an agent, which makes sense because agents are like sneaky spies, right? So we don't always need them. Sometimes they've got to be hidden. They've got to be undercover. They're solving crimes, doing whatever an agent does. We don't always need it. So will have been memorized. We could add an agent by the cactus, by the hair gel. You can tell I'm just looking at things that are around my room, can't you? <laughs> That's how we can help identify the passive voice. That will be hopefully a tip you can take with you after this lesson. Okay, what I'm going to do now is go over a reminder of how to change from the active to the passive voice before just going over a few more questions to finish the lesson. We've all done really well. We just have 10 minutes left. I know you can do it. We're nearly there. Keep pushing through. So when you're changing a sentence from the active voice to the passive voice, you need to consider three steps, okay? So the first thing we need to look at is the object. Um, the object in the active sentence becomes the subject in the passive sentence, okay? The subject of the active sentence becomes the agent of the passive sentence, and we often do this through the preposition by, okay? So Jono memorized the children's names is the active voice, the children's names were memorized by Jono. That is the passive voice, okay? Now also the verb in the active sense is changed to the auxiliary verb to be and the past participle, which is just a very obnoxious way of saying we need to have like, like rather than being will mem like memorize, it was, oh my gosh, hold on. I lost my train of thought. The verb in the active sense is changed to the auxiliary verb of to be and the past participle, that is just the uh, like a very fancy way of saying we need to add that extra auxiliary verb, which is a conjugation of to be. So Jono plays in the playground would change to the playground was being played in by Jono. So we've added the being in there, that which is the form of to be, which is the auxiliary verb in the past tense. There we go. That was a journey, wasn't it? I think this will make more sense when we look at a question together and look how we change a whole sentence into the passive voice. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So which option correctly changes the sentence below into the passive voice? I will let you have a little go. Now, if you want an extension, let me know what the subject, agent and verb are in the sentences, in the, in the correct passive voice sentence. My final hint is make sure the sentence makes sense. Don't just look for the subject, verb, and agent. Diane, the lesson finishes in about eight minutes. Darmindra, very good job at the extension. No worries, Diane. Okay, we've had a minute, so I'm now gonna start talking through how we do it. So we are changing the below sentence into the passive voice. So we're going from active to passive. So let me get some nice little pens out to show what we need to do. So in this sentence, the judge sentenced the vicious criminal. Let's separate this into its constituent parts. The judge is going to be the subject because it is the person performing the action. Sentenced is going to be the verb because it's the doing words. And the vicious criminal is the object. Whoever, oh, what, a bit of an intense sen sentence. The judge sentenced the vicious criminal. So the object is the vicious, vicious criminal because it, it is the person in the sentence having the action done to it. Now, all we need to do is follow the same set of rules that I just talked about. <laughs> so when we're changing from the active to the passive voice, the object of the sentence becomes the subject. So the vicious criminal is gonna become the subject. Now we always know the subject comes before the verb. So the vic vicious criminal needs to come before sentenced. So it needs to be at the start of the sentence like it is in A and B. So that means we can get rid of C and D because the, the 
object is not before the verb was sentenced. So I know C, well, D is just wrong because D is all over the place. D is just having one of those weeks. D needs to go and like chill in a, in a sauna, have a bath, write out its like goals and maybe speak to its like family member or friend, loved one and just sort out its order. It's a bit of a mess. Nothing wrong with it, but just needs to do a little bit of TLC because by the vicious criminal, the judge was sentenced. The syntax is all wrong in that sentence. So we've narrowed it down to A and B because we know that our object has got to be at the start of the sentence. So the vicious criminal was sentenced. So we know both of those are right because we've taken our verb sentence and we've added our auxiliary verb was. So that's the conjugation of to be. And then we need to have by the judge to introduce the agent. So the, the subject of the active sentence has become the agent. So we have the judge, the judge. A is just wrong because it's missing the by. We need that preposition to so the sentence makes sense because the vicious criminal was sentenced the judge. That don't make no kind of sense. We need that preposition by to let us know that it was the judge doing the sentencing. Okay, who got that right? I'm gonna end the poll and see how we voted. And I think we've got time for one more question. So well done. The majority of us went for answer option B. Really good work class. What I would say is I think we still do struggle on these questions more than the other ones. So make sure you do the homework after the class on Nucleus just to lock in all of this knowledge because active and passive voice, once you've learned it once, you've learned it well, it will stick in, okay? But very good job for everyone that did vote for B. Okay, so, oh, should, oh how mean am I feeling? I don't know. I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give us one more question. It's gonna be quite a hard one, but again, as I've said, these lessons scale and get harder towards the end. So let's get into it. Can you please convert the below sentence into the passive voice? Good practice for the creative writing competition, which I'll talk more about tomorrow in Friday Fun Day. And don't worry if you don't like dinosaurs, there'll also be some comprehension and creative writing thrown in for good measure. Okay, we've had about a minute, so I'll quickly just start talking through the answer. So what we need to do here, remember we're going into the passive voice. So the caterpillar had devotedly and meticulously built the shiny chrys shining chrysalis in which it would now live over many days. So here the caterpillar is the subject of the sentence that's performing the action. So I know that the subject is going to become the agent in the passive voice. So I know I need by the caterpillar somewhere in my answer, okay? So that, to be honest, just knowing that helps me eliminate bare answer choices. So the shining chrysalis in which it would now live had been devotedly and meticulously built the caterpillar over many days. I know I need that preposition by the caterpillar in my answer somewhere. So A is out. The shining chrysalis, the shining chrysalis had been devotedly and meticulously built by the caterpillar in which it would now live over many days. It could be B because it's got by the caterpillar in. C also has by the caterpillar in. D does not. So I know it's between B and C. So I next look at the verb. I know the verb is um, had the caterpillar, my annotation is in the way, the caterpillar had devotedly and meticulously built the shining chrysal chrysalis. So I know I need that, I need the auxiliary verb to be in the correct conjugation in the sentence. So I know I need been somewhere in there. So again, that doesn't really help me with B or C because they both have been in it. So what do I do next? So I'm looking at B and C and I can see that the had built needs to be changed into the passive voice with been. So had been built is what we need. And finally, we've looked at the, we've looked at the caterpillar. We now need to look at the shining chrys chrysalis, which needs to come at the beginning of the sentence. Again, that happens with B and C. So 
what do you need to do to pick between B and C? I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds to vote and then I'll tell you. <laughs> Encouraging you to think for yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna share the results. Tie up between B and C, there's only a couple of votes in it. The majority of us went for B, are we right? No, the answer is C. So the reason that we've got to go for answer C, so the, the shiny chrysalis in which it would now live had been devotedly and meticulously built by the caterpillar over many days. So if we look at B, the shiny chrysalis had been devotedly and meticulously built by the caterpillar in which it would now live over many days. That syntax doesn't make sense. I've been bit by the caterpillar in which it would now live. It sounds like the caterpillar is like living inside itself. So by the caterpillar in which it would now live, that parenthetical clause relates to the chrysalis. So it needs to stick together. So B is a red herring. The shining chrysalis in which it would now live had been devotedly and meticulously built by the caterpillar. So in which it would now live refers to the chrysalis because that's what the caterpillar is going to be living in. Okay, can I just say a big well done to everyone in this lesson because we covered a lot. What I need to make sure you do is make sure you log into Nucleus when you're done to complete your learning challenge. Maybe watch this lesson back on your lesson library. Complete a quick questionnaire. We love the feedback, give it to us and you can leave the webinar when you are ready. I will see you tomorrow morning for Friday Fun Day at 9 a.m. Uh, where we're looking at comprehensions around dinosaurs. Oh. And remember to come back for Math Club later with James. Have a lovely day, everyone. And I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.